<clears throat> I got to apologize for my throat again, but you know, I'm dealing with it the best I can. <clears throat> I told Martha that the devil tries to frustrate us because he doesn't want us to do the will of the Lord. And so I was committed to bring this sermon. And it would be foolish for me not to because it shows I'm not committed. <laughs> anyway, this is what it's about. You could, you will never endure. Now, the previous lesson was, or sermon was, that in the last days uh, there will be a great falling away because people will not endure. So, and so I had an open question: What does it take? Well, you got to be committed. Are you or not? I don't. I don't know. <clears throat> Some people say they are, but when you Try to depend on them, and it doesn't really work. A lot of the discussion will be on Hebrews 10, beginning with verse 19. So it's a long verse, so I put it up in uh, several slides there. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter <clears throat> the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, open for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house, house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us <clears throat> from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. So verse 23 says, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. See, once you accepted Christ, I mean, you're under a different uh, expectations of this, in this life. Before, nobody cared. Go, go run yourself, get yourself run over. Or go commit adultery. You're not my kid. But you know what? Once you become a child of God, he wants you to be committed and he wants you to follow his word. This is what he says in uh, verse 23. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promise is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. But let us encourage one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. Maybe I should be asking that question. <clears throat> Do you folks think the day is approaching? It seems that way. It appears to be. Can a person agree, uh, be a good Christian without being committed to Christ and his church? Answer is no. I mean, you can go to church. You can even send tithe to a church. You can actually, you know, fellowship with people after the service. <clears throat> But this does not prove your commitment to Christ. Not at all. Um, Hebrews 10, 26. If we, we do, if we deliberately keep on sinning after we receive the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left. That blows out of the water the once saved, always saved idea. See these doctrines that the world makes up to make them feel better? I, I think in the lesson we, we discovered that people make up their religions because it suits them. They're okay with whatever you're doing. 
But the problem is that if you're still doing the same thing, there's no more sacrifice for sins. And the sacrifice is for Christ. But he says, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. Anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more severely do you think a man deserves to be punished who has trampled on the Son, Son of God underfoot? and has treated as an unholy thing, covenant that sanctified him, Christ, of course, and who insulted the spirit of grace. So that is the people that crucified the Lord. We can't even say that everybody that, that was okay with him being crucified is also burning in hell. Who knows? Like the thief on the cross. <clears throat> he got it right at the right time. He said, it is mine to avenge, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Dreadful, isn't it? Everybody thinks it's, it's a good, it's a good, happy thing that, to happen. But if you're in bad with the Lord, and he, you're in his presence, there's not going to be any eternal life or crown yet to, that you expect. There's the, the, the burning into all damnation. So... <clears throat> How do we avoid the lack of commitment? We're going to look at this. First of all, we say no to cheap grace, and I'll try to define that. Individualism, that's all about you. Selfishness, you get upset because you didn't get what everybody's got. Busyness, in other words, you're being occupied. You're not working for God. You're occupied, and sometimes it becomes the uh, uh, being occupied for the devil. <clears throat> so look, here we say anything less than a conscious commitment to the important is an unconscious commitment to the unimportant. I forgot where I quoted that from, but I won't take credit for it. In, in, uh, in fact, that, let, let's just say that you were supposed to go to a, a Bible meeting. But you decided to go to, the, to, to the, the dance or something. I don't know if anybody goes to dances anymore. But you know what I mean. <clears throat> so, the question is, is the dance more important than God? Well, you tell them that, and they'll get angry with you. And then they call you, oh, being holier than thou, and this and this and that. But just think about it. Anything that is more important to you than God has become an idol to you. And you're making a conscious commitment to it. This is why people that think that God is okay with occasional sinning. If you're doing that and you know it's wrong, you will be accountable. And so let's look at the, the example of Jesus. He extended grace, but he expected commitment. He gave us grace. Now remember, what is grace? That means that you don't have to pay the price for something you desperately owe. Let's just say that um, you have a, you borrow money from the bank, and then they tell you, you know, and you after you tell them that you lost your job but you're looking, then they'll say, oh, okay, then we will extend a grace period 
until uh, <clears throat> six months from now. Hopefully you're working then. But that grace is going to go away when you're not committed to your word. We need to keep our word. We, we need to keep our word to people, but more importantly, to God. Luke chapter 5, verse, beginning with verse 10. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So they pulled up their boats up on shore and they left everything and followed him. How many people would do that? Can you imagine? They had they had belongings. What did they leave behind? Food, clothing, and tools to, to survive with. They're putting their complete trust in the Lord. And uh, and of course, when he was talking about catching men instead of fish, we're catching men for the Lord, not for ourselves. So the challenge is leave the old life that you've been living. But why should we do that? Because following him into a great adventure. Fish for men instead. That's what you got a purpose and adventure. Has my life been an adventure since I accepted Christ? Boy, you better believe it. Far more than I expected. And I'm sure everybody's got stories to tell. But you know what I mean, that when you accepted Christ, things did not change uh, for, the, for the better as far as you being rich, everybody liking you and so forth. I think I told the story about my, about my grandson when I baptized him. I don't know what got into his head thinking that everything will be perfect from now on. So, and, and so he was still really in, in cloud nine as he was heading to the car. And his dad thought everybody was in. So he closes the door and Evan's hand is there. Boy, he screamed and started crying and crying. And we try to comfort him and, and I asked, he asked me, uh, Grandpa Joe, this shouldn't happen to a Christian, right? And, and so I said to him, you know, it's funny you said that. Because on the day I was baptized, I got, I got accidentally in a job. Uh, a, a, a drill bit that went through my thumb. And so, so he knew what I was talking about, that I knew that he was talking about. And so maybe those are the things that we need to tell people. If you accept the Lord, don't think everything will be perfect. But it will not be boring. That's for sure. My life has not been boring. Except lately because I'm unemployed. And now Luke 9, <coughs> excuse me, and he said, the Son of Man must suffer many things, <clears throat> be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law. And he must be killed on the third day and raised to life. And then he said to them all, if anyone would come after me, There. Oops. So, where's I think I'll, <clears throat> I skipped through one of them there. I apologize. So, really, the, the one we, we skipped is the one that I, I can quote now. Be prepared to leave everything you have behind. Remember the story about this um, 
poor rich boy or young man. And Jesus knew what was more important to him. So he said, I'll follow you. He said, if you want to follow me, sell everything you can and give to the poor. Like I, that, this young man says, I got too much. So he felt a little sad, but not sad enough to surrender his soul to eternal damnation. Uh, material things can actually uh, be something that comes between you and God. And it should not be, but it does happen. But he does say, anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be by his disciple. And he gives an example. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Will he not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough money to complete it? For he lays the foundation and not able to finish it. Everyone who sees it will ridicule him, saying, this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Will he not first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still along the way and ask for terms of peace. In other words, I'm, I'm giving up. What do you want? In the same way, any of you who does not give up everything, he has cannot be my disciple. If you don't, if you're not able to commit everything you got, then you can't be the disciple of the Lord. And everybody wants, uh, it's kind of like I told somebody, everybody wants to go to the kingdom of heaven, but nobody wants to die. Isn't that the way it is? Everybody wants, so let's apply it here. Everybody wants the blessings from the Lord. But, they don't want to be committed. You take them aside, or at least I did, and ask them, will you be committed to this project that I have for you? You know, no, I, I, I got so much to do and blah, 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 and this and that. Excuses, you know, but I'm so, I was so used to them, I, it, I didn't matter to me. But I was... So, uh, pleasantly surprising is that anything, I will do anything. And that was wonderful. So Luke 14, 25 to 33, <clears> the <throat> challenge is to put Christ first. And the motivation, in other words, why should I do this? Count the cost of following him. Count the cost of not following him. So let me take it to a practical thing. I was counseling one of my students and I, tell to, I told them, are you committed to get educated? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, I was a department chair at the time. <clears throat> yes, sir, I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually really committed. And then I said, why are you committed? Because I'm tired of being poor. Isn't that why we try to succeed many times? And then I told him the very disappointing thing. Are, are you able to pay the cost of following up uh, into, or, or rather getting into education? And then before they started nodding yes, I tell them it's gonna cost this amount. And I know that you got, um, you know, 
uh, different things to support you. Maybe mom and dad, you know, maybe a scholarship of some kind. But they don't cover everything. You still got to go work and do something else. And this particular young man said, why would I want to go back to work if I'm trying to leave that job? And I said, well, you won't know, be able to afford college then. And the truth of the matter is, a lot of people these days cannot. So they borrow until they're half dead over here, you know, and they, they gave their, they've given up everything. So there's two myths concern, cons, uh, about commitment today. We don't have the time. And young people say they don't make commitments. That, that's sad, isn't it? They do not make commitments. You know, young people these days in this generation do not like to be committed to anything. Sometimes we would we would ask visitors, will you come back next week? I don't know. I'm, I'm visiting different churches. Uh, if you see my my face again, then I'm committed. This particular person was a, a young woman that came to our church building. And she was, you know, really got into the hymns and, and really read it, all the verses and really participated in our, um, in, 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 our, in our time of sharing food and so forth. But she didn't, she never came back. She liked everything. But she never came back. In fact, I found out I, I, because she's on my Facebook. I found out from her later. She had been doing this for years. <laughs> she says it's so much fun to see different people. I said, you you go to any any church, and you know what? She had the same mentality that Oprah has. And the one that was quoted uh, earlier in this study by Cynthia, she said, she said, well, you know, all of these these churches that were, they worship God. It's the same God. They're just coming at him from different directions. And what does the Lord say? No man comes unto, unto the Father but through me. So if you're over there at a church, uh, 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 you know, paying homage to, to Buddha or to some other foreign god, you know, in uh, people from India, they also have a lot of gods, but they also have a lot of catastrophes, as you know. But you're not supposed to say, mention that. The Lord doesn't is not happy about that. So I told her all these things and she goes, Oh, but I won't know if they're worshiping the wrong thing unless I go visit them. So I gave I gave up to her. I haven't seen her again or heard her again, but she's still a nice person. But if you were a nice person, does that make you a person that is saved? No, I think the answer is quite clearly no. In Luke, in John 6, now I want you to read this because I'm dealing with this right now. And But I say it's a joke, you know. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and they no longer followed him. You do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus called S of the twelve. But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. 
And what did the Lord tell them? Before, before the cock the crows, three times you will deny me. And he felt bad about it because he said, I would never deny you. But when he was saying he was committed, he thought he was speaking for all the disciples. But he wasn't. They left. But the story ends well. I won't say happy. The disciples came to their senses when they saw that Christ came again from the dead. And he showed himself that he was alive. Boy, they were completely committed. But what does Jesus say? Blessed are those that don't see but still believe. He said, you do well by, by believing because you saw. But what about those people that never see God or never see a miracle? Those people are truly committed. Let me conclude. I'm sorry about those verses there. I'm basically concluding because I'm running out of time and I'm running out of voice. Hopefully I'll have a better voice tomorrow, uh, next year, next week rather. Do you think the world has some time, something better to offer you than what God offers you through eternal life? Wow. C.S. Lewis, I mean, I, I, would want to, I want to quote him, but I, I don't know how exactly what he said. But I can tell you the gist of it. i got to go back and look it up. I got most of his books. C.S. Lewis said one time, and I, I know that uh, Stan uh, reads a lot of his books, so maybe Stan remembers this one. He says, people that are preach the gospel of Christ, of salvation, and say no. It's like children going back to the mud and playing with mud and making uh, mud pies. Everybody did that, right? Uh, I know I did. We made mud pies and stuff. When mom caught us, you got very angry with us. But you know what? C.S. Lewis had to come up uh, uh, in, this, in this condition here to make us understand that Christ and the life that he gives us is far more uh, important. Because think about it. Just like those mud pies, where is your job going to go? Think about your first job you had. You were so you felt you were so lucky that you did had this job. In fact, I I, I think I I felt I felt, I was really surprised that I got that job. But the Lord brought me back into. Uh, and the true belief, because it's, I mentioned a while ago that I got my finger drilled. Well, that was not my fault. Today you spent compensation, right? Or something. Of course, I was a teenager, so who, who knows? And then he fires me. So much for my commitment to that job. My cousin who helped me get that job, she really got angry and she quit the job too. But what I'm saying here regarding the mud pies, that job is like the mud pie you were making before that you thought was more important than going to church. Think about that. Sometimes I pass by buildings that I knew I worked in Buildings that I thought were very important to me, and they're empty. They're in disrepair. 
So imagine me committing to that instead of the Lord. And thank God I made the right choice. You know, for being very young, I, I think I did the right choice. But I'm not bragging on myself because my whole family made the right choice too. Including my dad. But the question is, have you made the right choice? Because that commitment must be completed. It must be complete. You got to follow through. You got to do the best that you can. And for as long as you can. Now Stan pointed out to me that my voice gets better at the end. <clears throat> so we'll see. So just because you say you're committed. You got to prove it. You got to show it. The enemy will throw every kind of obstacle on you. But unless you fight through it, you will give up. Like a lot of the people in the world do. You know, they don't want to do all those things. They don't they don't want to be committed. But we can't talk about that. We got to talk about ourselves. Are we committed? I know I am. And you must be because you could be at a better place, a better building, you know, that's for sure. But Lord knows that. Do you? I firmly believe that the Lord will reward those that have been very committed at the end. Reward them not with eternal life because they already have that. But with blessings that cannot be measured. So that's why you're being committed. 